Hey, what's up, guys? It's Arlie. And I'm here with another video. We are reacting to White DNA is an Abomination. Hi, I'm Lana with Red Eyes. Yes, it's okay to be white. It's okay to love being white. It's okay to want to live around other white people. And Why do I feel like I'm watching an indoctrination video? <laughs> I feel like I'm watching one, but nothing against white people, obviously. This video is just reviewing this video because someone asked me to. And it's okay to prefer your own people. Everyone else does. And in fact, non-whites across the world also love whites because they keep mass migrating to come live next to us in the countries we built. But once they go to college, they turn into Rudy Martinez from Texas State University. He wrote a piece for the University Star titled, Your DNA is an Abomination. Yes, he's talking about white people. His trope goes on about how only a few white people are decent, that white people are an aberration, how he hates us because we shouldn't exist. Oh, and white death means liberation to all. So is Rudy going to off himself for the greater good since he... He sounds insane. <laughs> he sounds insane. He's absolutely insane. Uh, crazy people out here. Huh? He possesses some European DNA. Whiteness is a form of racial oppression. Sure. The suggestion is that it is somehow possible to separate whiteness from oppression. And it is not. There can be no white race without the phenomenon of white supremacy. To be white is a mortal sin in the wacky church of anti-whiteness. That's right, if white people were genocided, there would be world peace. Daily life would be unicorns and gumdrops across the globe. All those tribal- uh, I wouldn't say it'd be world peace. Um, I think if, I think the world would be a lot different if Europeans didn't take over the world. I just, I see it being different. Oh, I don't know if it'd be a good way or worse. It most likely could be worse because there's a lot of technologies that they've developed that even though, yes, at some point they oppressed others, you know, white societies oppressed others, they got to a point to where they opened up society for all in most countries. Like, you know, for the most part, an immigrant can come to this country and start a new life, kind of. I mean, it depends on who you talk to, um, but it is kind of crazy how, you know, they call white people evil, but these are, I mean, yes, the oppressors essentially opened up and allowed people to live in their system, so, and I just find it crazy, this anti-evilness, not every, of course there's racist white people, but not every white person is going to be evil. Who would want to live like that? Who wants to live in their head like, oh, every white person is evil. Oh my God, I would be, I wouldn't even want to live life because I'd be constantly looking over my shoulder, worrying about a white person trying to kill me. You know? It's evil people everywhere. You know, I've had black people who do look like they try to kill me too, so. And Hispanic people and all kinds of people, it can be anybody, they can kill you, so. It's not just white people, you know, just saying. Civil wars in Africa and the conflict in the Middle East, it would simply cease to exist. The Third World would become the most prosperous places on the planet. And Mexico would have the most advanced space program. If only white people didn't exist. But if you can... I do, I don't kind of like what this girl is implying when she's talking. She's implying that apparently, like, if white people didn't didn't exist in the space program wouldn't have ever happened. You never know that. It could have been another race that catapulted the space program, or let's say in a different reality, white people ended up enslaved and it wasn't it wasn't blacks who were enslaved. What if it was whites? There's there's so many scenarios of how things could have happened. But Europeans ended up taking over the world and ended up creating advantages to move ahead in society. Okay, but what she's implying here, it just seems like, oh, she's implying that, oh, Mexico is too dumb to even do what we did, is what she's implying. But they had a head start. I mean, probably factors in, because there's no IQ correlation to the, your race, you know. It's usually environmental and where you came from. 
So, I don't know. Front and anti-white, they'll spout cultural Marxist mumbo jumbo and say they're not really talking about killing off white people, just the social construct of whiteness. I mean, I don't think white people should be killed off. Actually, I don't think any human being with a certain DNA structure should be killed off because, to be honest, that would just be like a race in history, which is not good for anybody. So, in short, how I feel is that. If there's people genuinely out there, whether they're black or even, I've seen white people that hate being white because they think that they, they've gotten into this white guilt because of all the bad history and bad blood with other races that they just, in their head, think that it's okay to hate themselves. They're like, oh, I hate my people. You should never hate where you're from. But I don't care if you're black. If you have self-hate and you think that you're less or you came from a part of history that was less because you were a slave, you should be proud that you were a slave and your ancestors, uh, well, you shouldn't be proud of what happened to your ancestors, but you should be happy that your ancestors fought for you, for you to be here today. It's kind of like heroic when I think about it, like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Harriet Tubman, when I think of these people, I think of their sacrifice that allowed me to have the right to live in a world that was oppressive. And um, I think of black people look at it from that perspective and not look at what happened to them, but look at it as, hey, we're still here and we're still going strong. I think a lot more black people would be proud of themselves as well. And then as for white people, like I said, if you hate your own people because of the history of what your people have done, you should hate yourself. It had nothing to do with you. And you can look at it as, well, the benefits of this is that we've been educated and had better education and had more privilege. Let's take that privilege and try to mend some of the past bad blood. You should be proud of where you're from. You know, just look at it as my ancestors were ruthless uh, ancestors. And, but that doesn't mean I have to be, and that doesn't mean that I have to hate myself because of I'm born in this world with a history where my people came from this side of the spectrum. No one should hate which side of the spectrum they came from. Yes, history is bad, but um, don't hate yourselves. That's how I look at it. <laughs> They have to twist and contort, do back handsprings to try and excuse the fact that they're really attacking the very existence of white people. No. Okay. So, um, is what, how whiteness is defined. And I can stand up here and read this to you, but I'd rather you guys read it. So can I get somebody to read the first bullet point of white, how whiteness is defined? Socially and politically. Oh. They believe the white race is a social construct, but all of a sudden they see white when it comes to telling. That's impossible for white to be a social construct because there's poor whites, there's whites that are in the middle, and then there's whites that are rich, and then there's whites that are poorly educated, and then there's whites that are highly educated. It, it, actually, how you can look at it is that whites aren't really in a social construct at all. They're just like any other race of people, they have certain, you know, things they do in their culture, yes, they have certain ways of thinking, but it can vary among a spectrum of people. Not all people are the same. Um, in the human race as a whole, no one individually is the same. So to say that whiteness is some type of social construct is insane, actually them to die off or give away their stuff. Rachel Dolezal is a product of the idea that race doesn't exist and whiteness is a social construct that must be denounced and destroyed. How did it work out for her? You know, what is whiteness or blackness or, you know, what does it mean to fall in between or in what ways are we who we are? I'm not part of that owning, praising, living whiteness. Like, that's just not, that's not me. Well, being, I mean, being able to distance yourself from that mm -hmm. is, is kind of a privilege, right? Being able to say, you know what, I don't want anything to do with the whiteness. 
distancing yourself from, from privilege is privilege. When the police show up, I can't say, whoa, 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 whoa. Just so you know, I'm not black. I'm actually white. It doesn't work that way. Part of me wonders, I'm like, are people actually saying you have privilege and you've been privileged? Or are people more interested in just calling me white? If race is just a made-up idea, then Rachel is right. She can identify as black. No, no, it's white privilege that she's able to walk away from her whiteness. All of a sudden, the white race does exist, and whiteness cannot be separated from a white human being. Every white person is guilty of it, even if they denounce their own race, have black kids, and fight for black interests. Anti-whites push what's convenient at the time. They don't even believe their own lies. They'll say, well, whiteness is a paradox, and it's hard to explain. You know, I don't even know if white privilege exists. I mean, does it? I mean, I can't really, because it's, privilege is what you work for, right? Or, um, I'm trying to figure out, I don't know exactly what the definition of privilege is. It's like having an advantage in something or having an upper hand in something. Um, do whites across the board have a more of an upper hand than me in my head um maybe it comes to like rights when it comes to like maybe when you stop by a car by a cop like you're more likely to be shot maybe i don't know but privilege is it's so hard to define because like i'm pretty sure if you had a white dude resisting the police he would get shot too killed or beaten up you know um, it's really, it's so hard to define privilege because do whites really have privileges? Because if you go to other countries like in Sweden or other, just other countries outside the USA, are you saying that whites in the US, Europeans in the US have privilege? Because yeah, I guess I can kind of agree with that, but you can't say that whites as a whole have a privilege you know what i mean like you can't say like a white person can go do whatever they want in africa somewhere and not get beat up and killed and shot you know it's i guess you could say they have privilege in this on this land but it's really hard to define and i don't like to use the word uh privilege for whites as a whole because to be honest, anyone in any type of situation can have a privilege. You know, I can, let's put it like this. Let's say I'm a black man with a million dollars, and I'll walk in the door and I say, I want to buy that house, and I have the money to buy it. And then this white person comes in, and they have 500 grand, but they want to put a down payment down. Do you think they're going to choose a guy who has a million dollars, or they're going to choose a guy who has 500,000? They're going to choose a guy who can pay up front, not some guy with 500 grand and then say he's going to pay later. That's not how this works. Now, a lot of you will put out the example, oh, what about the white guy? What if he had a million dollars too? They will sell it to him first. Well, who got there first? Who came first? If the black man came first, I like to think that they would give, let him buy the house before the white dude did, and they wouldn't sell it to him just because he's white and because he came second, you know what I mean? So, I don't, it's hard, it's, it's hard. Um, it's like me on YouTube saying that white people get clicked on more, and I feel like, oh, they have privilege because they got clicked on more. Um, so what if they do? If I get clicked on less, I just make my videos the way I need to make them, and I'm probably gonna go further than they are. It's not necessarily privilege. I think people just I think people just don't understand what privilege actually means. And I don't know. It, it, it's hard to define. Is there is there white privilege? And maybe I've never really seen it firsthand and don't know if it exists because I'm going out here doing crazy stuff all the time. Um, and I haven't really gotten in any huge trouble. So it's really hard uh, to know. It, it, maybe it depends on your demeanor. You know, do they feel like, um, do thug black people or black people from certain impover impoverished areas feel like 
whites have privilege because from where they whites are in like in, let's say these whites have money and they're not like on the same level as these impoverished blacks they may see it as they have privilege because they have money and they see it as them themselves as low because they're poor it's an interesting it's, it's interesting to talk about but you know it, it's it's so weird it's, it, it I could talk about this all day you know no, it's a bunch of lies meant to confuse and manipulate whites so they do whatever they want them to do. If whiteness is a social construct that we can simply choose or reject, and if it's not tied to genetics, then blackness, Jewishness, Asianness, and so on are also fake. Okay, then write an article at your uni about the social construct of Jewishness and blackness and see what happens. Blackness is an identity that can be plausibly argued. Black studies is the study of a people that has formed itself in resistance to its oppression. Whiteness studies is a direct attack on white people. Their history, culture, traits, and everything that belongs to them. Everything that makes up their identity as a group. But who's defining what it means to be white? Non-whites. <laughs> if anyone is gonna define what it means to be white, it's gonna be white people. But you see, it's only okay to identify as white if you are advocating for the total annihilation of your race. It's commonplace to see editorials flat out talk about white genocide. Because after genocide, then the world will be cotton puffs and rainbows, peace on earth. Imagine everyone living together in peace. That would be not necessarily... It's just not going to happen. It's not going to be any peace. Okay, just because you kill white people doesn't automatically make the world peaceful. Right now in Africa, probably as I speak, there's like groups of Africans driving around with AK-47s killing kids and families and tents and stuff in certain areas. Like, But of course, Africa's developing and it's getting better. It's finally getting a, its economy stabilized. It's working with China. So Africa, it's looking up. But what I'm trying to say is just because cause there's no white people in those areas when that stuff happens. So you can't blame it on white people, you know. And yes, you can blame it on colonization for Africa becoming the way it is. But, I mean, we, we can't shift the blame because it's always the job of a certain group of people to push through whatever they've been through. Maybe it's war colonization. Maybe it's losing something. Uh, you should always push through. And I feel like where we're at now in society is that we just point fingers and blame. We don't need to sit. I feel like as black people, I'm speaking for the black community. I'm not speaking for the Hispanic community and all these other communities. I'm speaking for the black community. They need to look at themselves, self-reflection, self-awareness, and improve and move beyond what has happened in the past. It seems like African Americans, for the most part in my group, just can't get over the fact of what happened. And no, you should never forget history, but you shouldn't let history define who you are. Just because you were a slave doesn't mean you need to stay one. It's only a perfect world, but a good world. And how do we get to that good world is the question. A world without conflict. And to me, my interpretation of these words is it would be a world for U.S a world without conflict simply is impossible. There's always going to be conflicts. You know, you have viruses, you have economy destabilizations. You're always going to have evil lurking no matter how good the world gets. This is just part of how it works. And this guy here, he, you should be lucky that most of the planet is working together in some way, shape, or form. Without Whiteness. Yeah, sure. That's why the most peaceful, safe, and prosperous nations are white. Owen of InfoWars interviewed students at Texas State about this blatant racist article. He's a nice guy, but he was way too soft and let stupidity off the hook. The article was literally calling to end the white race. And what were some of their responses? The opinion was very extreme, but do I agree that the opinion should be suppressed because it is extreme? No, I don't. Well, free speech. A college paper calls to destroy white people and says they shouldn't exist, which is inciting hatred if I ever heard it, and it's not hate speech. 
But a few flyers saying it's okay to be white causes nationwide panic and hysteria. Lee is on the UC Davis Black Leadership Council, which called a town hall meeting Friday to discuss the posters and racial tension on campus. Whoever's posting these photos, I don't think they're realizing how triggering these photos, these posters are for people. Free speech until it's a white person fighting back against the constant onslaught against their group. Wow, what white privilege. Anti-whites are so full of their own selfish interests and their group's expansionist agenda that they can't see the big, fat, obvious double standard glaring them in the face, taunting them every day. There's no point in debating. They lack the brain capacity to understand the most simple argument. They lack any empathy whatsoever to even put themselves in our shoes for one moment when whites are constantly judging themselves. They say white people are an abomination, but let me into your schools and give me a job in your business. Let me live in your neighborhood. You're so awful, but let me into your country now because I want a better life. An abomination, but please help us white people with foreign aid, medical technology, and food. So awful, but more equality and human rights. Yeah, that's a white thing too. Other white people things, cars, planes, trains, electricity, internet, toilets, medical advancements, photography, printing press, eyeglasses, space travel, and the computer you anti-whites use to bash white people. Other forms of whiteness include having a clean... See, here's the thing. The Europeans took over the world. They have massive influence. And anyone with a brain can see this. Not to say that whites are better. They're not even trying to tell you that they are better. The idea is that what they're trying to tell you, so you guys constantly bashing them, and they open these tools to all of you. Um, when they just could have kept oppressing you is what she's, I guess this video is implying. Um, to say that, that that's what it's implying, what I'm saying is that they're, they're kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it can come across as offensive, but not. Because it, it just implies that because if white people weren't here, any of this would have never happened. I'm not saying that the whites didn't have an impact. They had a huge impact on the world, and I don't think they should be killed off or destroyed. That's, that's just crazy. That's crazy to think about. And I think that European influence isn't necessarily bad. There's things that all races can learn from white people, but I guess these groups refuse to learn uh, from what they give you access to. A computer, it, it, it's kind of crazy, like, we have access to all these tools, but they, it, it's almost like the world, it's almost like the people who develop these tools, they're just treated like crap, okay? but. I oh, will put it like this. Do they deserve it? Is that my job to decide? I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard question because I didn't grow up in slavery. I didn't grow up and I, I really I loosely experienced rarely racism. It's happened like once or twice in my life. I had one girlfriend call me the N-word. She was a white girl. She called me the N-word and it was such a shock because like I've had a I've had friends of all different races, from different countries, of all different places, and when she said that, it was just devastating. I was like, wow, I, I couldn't believe it, you know. Even some of my friends couldn't believe it. They were like, what? But, you know, you can't avoid hatred anywhere, and it's hard. It's a hard question to say, oh, white people are just evil, or all of them are racist, or they hate brown, black people, you know. I, or yellow people. I can't. It's hard to have an answer for that. I'm going to think about it a little bit and see the conclusion of this video. Safe neighborhood, speaking English, table manners, and having a mom and dad. I could spend hours talking about the good things white people and our whiteness has brought to humanity, but anti whites are too dim witted or too full of hate and envy. Okay, her calling non-whites dim-witted is, is kind of messed up, dude. Um, I don't think non-whites are dim-witted. Uh, I think a lot of no-whites have a, a, a good enough reason to hate white people because of their past. Not hate, but just 
they have a good reason to not trust white people or the Europeans because of the past and that difficult past and the fact that there's still some of them out there that are racist and just have hatred in their hearts and believe they are the superior race. I think the blood, bad blood is justifiable, but at the same time, yes, modern whites have brought a lot to society and has done a lot to get rid of oppression and bring rights and laws that give non-whites more rights, especially in the U.S. and different countries. So it's, it's so hard. It's, it's hard at the same time to like not know if whites have you in their best interest, but at the same time, um, embrace them. It, it's, it's, it, it gives you this weird, because you don't know who is who. And what she's saying, saying a dim with it, it's just it's stupid. It's just terrible, you know. To realize and admit that most of what they use and think on a daily basis is courtesy of white people. Forget that, more racism, more slavery, more stolen land. And the funniest of all, white men stole these inventions. They stole it right out of our heads. They also say our success has only been because of the devaluation or subjugation of non-whites. Yeah, that's why the Nordic countries who have been isolated with their own people and who did not import slaves are the most successful. They say that ending whiteness is ending racism because only whites can be racist. No, no, no. It has everything to do with hostile Funniest of all, white men stole these inventions. They stole it right out of our heads. They also say our success has only been because of the devaluation or subjugation of non-whites. Yeah, that's why the Nordic countries who have been isolated with their own people and who did not import slaves. Yeah, there's other countries of uh, whites. A lot, of, a lot of people don't know Scandinavian. Some Scandinavian countries, I believe, Nordic countries, they didn't even import slaves. They didn't have slaves. Um, and they were just all white and they stayed within their communities. Um, but people just seem to forget about that part of history. So it's hard. How can I say this? I see whites as a common, a common people across the planet. And they were the first to kind of discover things and build up tools and things like that. Could it have been differently if it was black people? Like, maybe. Who knows? But there's a lot they contributed to society and humanity, and there, there's a lot of pain. But let's not forget the impact they've had across the board. So wanting to kill them is just crazy. Um, and right now they're running things, and for the most part, everything is better. But there are some things they've done that are better. You know, I can, off my fingers, I can name 10 things they do better than people in my, in my group. And I love my people, I love myself, I love my skin that I'm in, but I can't deny their contribution to society and humanity as a whole. And learning things from them, like wanting to educate myself and wanting to use these tools around me that they ultimately built, like computers. You gotta, you gotta look at it from a good perspective. Like they're not all evil, and if you want to think that, that's just on you. And I refuse to live in a world where I just think everybody's evil. You don't want to be naivete to the evilness and the, the, the realness and grittiness of the world. But you want to understand that not everyone, every, as me as a black man, I don't, I need to understand that every fucking white person isn't after to come and get me. You know, so anyways, I guess that's all I have to say. We're, we're going to keep on watching. Are the most successful. They say that ending whiteness is ending racism because only whites can be racist. No. To be honest, blacks probably would enslave blacks. Who knows? Or Hispanics would have enslaved blacks. Or blacks would have enslaved Hispanics. And if whites didn't take over, maybe blacks would enslave whites. We don't know what would have happened. History could have went so many different ways, okay? No, no, no. It has everything to do with hostile groups guilting white kids into giving away everything. And the truth is, none of what white people have done is justifiable. Nothing bad has ever happened in history is justifiable. All you can do is move from it and do better. And I do feel the white race has moved on and done better than the past. Yes, there's still some fuck-ups there. 
But even in my people, there's still some fuck-ups in our group. And we all got problems. Um, and us as individuals all have demons and problems. Okay? Just saying. Their ancestors rightfully earned for their children to have a better life. Do not adjust your screens. That is 10 happy fingers of things that the Black Lives Matter movement would like white people to give to them. Keywords there, give, give, give. White people, if you don't have any descendants, will your property to a black or brown family? How about no? White people, rebudget your monthly so you can donate to black funds for land purchasing. How about you get a job and buy your own shit? This is a good one. Check this out. Call the police on those sheetless clan Nazis and other lil dick white men. Get their ass fired. Now, attacking whiteness is a scapegoat used by those who cannot succeed on their own. See, I didn't even know it was that deep. I didn't even know it was that deep, bro. That's why I said that. <sighs> used by people whose own group has failed. I mean, come on. It's even white people who fund these whiteness programs in colleges. Yet another- I didn't even know white people fund those programs. <laughs> Your example of how a multiracial, multicultural society doesn't work. Thanks for watching. Before you go- She said a multicultural society doesn't work. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's hard to say that because the world is ever more connected. Here's YouTube. Um, does a. I don't know if they're. You know what? I don't know. This is. It's so deep on so many levels. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and peace.